start with this uh, see basically whenever you join any company <coughs> what i am teaching you right now see for example starting and stopping a system also they may not allow you as a intern okay, okay. so actually we are already in the advanced part so but uh, as a uh, this thing you should know how systems are started and stopped okay <coughs> so uh, on a when so they know how to back up this thing how to check everything on the other day i was asking you questions right correct correct and you that part total mm-hmm. so see uh, uh, what happens i will tell you uh, in because sap is a very large area and uh, if you are uh, working for a big big company na so you will be specialized in particular area if you, let us say you are doing uh, suppose you are in support then maybe you will be doing backups or you may be just uh, giving authorizations or you know so your area will be specific but if you are joining a small company there uh, you will be doing uh, everything you know like starting a uh, server internship in small company so so then you will be doing all this you know like uh, you will be starting a server stopping etc i mean what i'm what we are going to do is uh, what are we are going to touch all the uh, basis points you know wherever a basis administrator is involved like first day you remember i had put about 40 activities which sap basis will be doing now these are all the activities because even i work for a small company so in this small company i had to take backup i had to give authorizations everything you know like we had basis and security together so if it is a small company you will be doing basis and security together most most probably that's what i feel so uh, in, uh, there are different ways of starting sap system so one thing you have to remember that you, uh, this is the user id which is created uh, when sap system is in, uh, installed sid adm sid you will al- always have to remember system id so i can't see your screen actually. oh sorry sorry i just missed that yeah mr <laughs> <laughs> i remember you uh I just started recording, but uh, didn't share it. this is the user id which is created when you install sap uh, this is one user id and the other is for you know the oracle so every time uh, you want to manage uh, start or stop servers you have to log in with this user id only okay then there is something called a uh, uh, sap management console actually uh, uh, what has happened is we had uh, taken access of a sap server but uh, uh, they have disabled our login just now we checked it so uh, mr ravi is going to check on that so okay. so today we'll just go through this because this i had prepared now so i thought at least because i know these guys they will disable and then uh, sometimes the access is not there and so on okay so you will click on the SAP, sap management console and then you will get this kind of a screen you know where in uh, um, on this screen what happens is it shows all the sap systems which are installed on this server okay now here it is only a single server but there are many servers out there so you can select that right click if you right click on that system you will also get the different option or you can go to action in the menu you can see action and then say start so this is a, a time mode which is given you can just say okay here and it will start the system but before starting again yeah the it, it will ask you for uh, the password of that uh, particular uh, user this is uh, sap uh, while installation of sap whatever uh, id you had given a uh, password so that it will ask you so that password needs to be given because anyone just having access to uh, sid adm should not be able to start or stop the systems they should also have access to the 
password okay <coughs> so so you need to give this password so that then the system will start okay so here you will find that the these components are getting started for example the message server the dispatcher then this is the internet graphics server you know whatever graphics are shown on the in the sap system within the sap system and that is the service which is used for that so you will find that now it from yellow it is turning green so this is the start process so in this um, what is important is uh, there is one option called view so in case your system doesn't start so what do we do so in that case uh, uh, in that case you have to you should be able to analyze the uh, uh, message server log or the dispatcher log or you know so you will uh, click on this particular um, component and then view the log so this will help you in troubleshooting the issues because sometimes what happens your sap system may not start at all so you need to analyze what is the problem okay so the, these options are there uh, this open alerts current status is the is will show you the another you know, which are the work processes which are running etc or on the sys log you will it will show you the system uh, log uh, system log will show you if there are any specific errors or something you know so those uh, you need to identify and then troubleshoot for example uh, here it is showing uh, whatever for example in sm50 we see the entire screenshot you know we have seen earlier how it is, uh, how the dialogues and the, all the work processes are shown, what is the process ID, what is the status of it, whether it is running or it is in a, in a waiting state. So here, here at the operating system level also it will show you the number and the type of work process and the process ID which is attached to it. Okay, so from here also you can kill a work process. Suppose through SM50 if you are not able to kill it, or uh, the same then you can kill it from here from here also you can have access to the different logs okay at the operating system level <coughs> now uh, this is everything in detail so if you click on icm this comes under sm50 right sir yeah yeah this can comes under sm50 but this is at the operating system level we are checking but the same thing you can view it in sm50 okay Okay, that you can view it in SM50. Now, if you want to stop, again, uh, you can log in as SID ADM, then SAP management. Sir, I can't hear you. I'll speak louder. One minute. Huh? Hello. Hello. Hello, you can hear me now. Lot of disturbance you are getting. Hello, because there is a lot of silence. Okay, okay. So uh, again, if you want to stop the server, see starting and stopping servers will be uh, Usually servers when they are started, they are uh, not stopped at all unless you know there is some maintenance work kind of a thing. So uh, yes, yes. Uh, you have to take approval. Yeah, yeah. You require approval because uh, what happens in a for example production system, uh, you cannot just shut it down now. You have to take approval of the management that okay if it is okay then only uh, and only within that time you have to shut down and then start it off okay L let us say you have taken down time for say two hours then uh, you should shut down properly only for two hours you should not exceed but if your work is getting over in say one hour you have taken down time approval for two hours and if your, uh, you know, your work is over in one hour then you can start it off and inform people that okay my, my work is over and uh, we can release the system to users yeah oh, pardon oh, i didn't get you 
Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. You have to inform them, you know. <clears throat> See, as a basis administrator, this is um, this is the responsibility, you know. Uh, you have to, uh, because you are the owner of these servers, no one else. So you have to take the responsibility of starting and stopping. In case your servers are not stopping, you have to escalate to your senior, saying that this is not starting, this is the problem, and so on. If it doesn't stop, you are saying if it doesn't stop, right? See, if it is, see, well, one thing is the senior will analyze why it is not stopping or why it is not starting, okay? Because there, there has to be a reason why it is not starting or stopping, okay? Like I said, uh, uh, like you will have to check the logs at the operating system level. Let us say your system has stopped, okay, and uh, you are not able to start it. While starting, it is giving some errors. So there is, uh, you, see, basically you are not able to log into SAP at all. So everything is at the operating system level. At the operating system level, there are like I was showing you the different directories which are available. So those directories, you will have to go there and check the logs in that and then depending on the logs you will have to uh, uh, resolve the issues so maybe you know you are one of the five uh, hey, patching is uh, different I am just talking about your system is running very finely but uh, you have stopped it and while starting it is not starting so in that case, sometimes what happens, one of the file systems, uh, there is no space. That could be a problem. Or uh, for example, uh, uh, we talked about the Oracle listener, you know, the listener is not running. Okay. This is a common mistake which uh, most administrators face, you know, uh, your database is not starting. Why? Because your listener is not started. So you have to start the listener and then it, your database will start and then SAP will be able to. Yeah, I think uh, I had gone through that. In my previous decision, I had gone through that. I will show you again that particular slide. I'll show you that. So, uh, so that is what uh, administrators do, you know. One is uh, try to uh, analyze what is it. If you are not able to analyze and uh, uh, find the solution, then uh, if it is a production system, you have to open a ticket with SAP. SAP will then uh, try to log on to your system and uh, try to resolve your issue. So what you have to do is as a basis administrator, mm -hmm. See, for production system, uh, they will do it immediately. But for other system, they take the uh, two to three days. Because it's a development system, quality system, they take their own time. But in production, uh, they, if your production system is down, then they will immediately act on it. Because that is a contract which you have with them. So they will immediately contact. That is not a problem. <coughs> So, uh, I will show you that Oracle thing also, listener also, but uh, we'll just finish this. Uh, so, so you'll click on this and then uh, action stop. While stopping also, it will ask you whether you want to do an immediate uh, stop or you want to take this thing. I, if you want to immediately stop, you can say clear, select on hard on or then soft. Okay. Again, it will, here also it will, there is an authentication for See hard, see hard, hard is immediately it will shut down everything, it will kill, kill, basically it will kill all the um, processes which are in it. Yeah, 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 it's forced, it's forced. So it will just kill it, you know. Otherwise it will nicely shut down all the work processes. So it takes some time to desync. So ultimately, you know, uh, it is better to do soft because then it will nicely shut down each work process. You have got, if you have got enough time now, 
then you should always do it through a soft only otherwise there is some emergencies there you want to shut down immediately or something then hard is there so it depends you know yeah see usually uh, these are all uh, for example even hard stop uh, there is there is no problem as such because see we uh, it's everything is at the back end is running in a uh, for example oracle database or sql database so whatever has not been committed to the database will not get uh, uh, i mean updated in the database at all so it is just going to uh, this thing your database is going to be consistent so you that you don't have to worry okay uh, and uh, you don't have to worry that okay something will go wrong or something nothing happens even if you do hard now there is no problem it uh, uh, no errors will be there when you are starting the system they have given these two options because see otherwise uh, they wouldn't have given this hard hard uh, shutdown uh, option at all but this is given only when uh, you want to immediately shut down but that rarely happens you know if you have got enough uh, time da downtime then uh, it rarely happens again uh, because since it's a sap server no one should uh, be able to shut down the system just like that so again it will ask you for a, a password so that it gets registered you know that someone who had access to these credentials has shut down the server So guys, let's say tomorrow you want to analyze who has shut down. Then uh, in the Windows event uh, log, uh, you will be able to see that someone has logged in at this particular time and shut down. Okay. After shutting down, now everything is while while before shutting down, it is all in green. But after shutdown, it uh, grays down. So whenever you log on to the management uh, console, now you will be able to see that. Uh, whether your system is in green or in gray if it is green it is running if it is gray it is not running so you need to start it so you will click like that okay <clears throat> now let's have that was in windows now we'll have a look at uh, huh, start we saw it in the top i had taken the st start here see you will log in as a uh, cdadm okay then you will select now this is in gray right so you will select the server right click and start or you can uh, there is option from action also you select the server action start okay so it will start before starting it will again prompt you for the password so yeah yeah right click and start i actually i was i would have shown you today only but uh, they have removed the access actually But uh, Ravi will is trying. We today is Sunday now and it's morning, so no one will be in the office. So that will do it, okay. And then these are the components which get started. Now we will see it is in yellow, green, and then ultimately it becomes green, like that. So these are the work processes which are uh, getting activated, you know, like that. And then once everything is there, it becomes green, like this. It becomes green like this, okay. so the process is uh, very easy in uh, windows and same with uh, we will have a look at uh, the linux in linux or unix what is the process uh, that is followed uh, yeah yeah yes see windows uh, why windows is not used i will tell you one is because of um, um, many viruses okay even though we have uh, antivirus available but uh, the reason why everyone wants to work on uh, linux or unix is because uh, it is very stable and there are no viruses as such and the performance uh, compared to uh, windows servers it is very nice on unix servers okay so uh, unix servers are always preferred Uh, and that too even now everything is on linux suze linux or red hat linux so unix system like for example ibm has got their own uh, operating system aix so um, even that is a very stable uh, operating system i have worked on it and uh, the performance is really good so 
I mean, all administrators or everyone, all customers prefer to work on Unix. But there could be systems which are on Windows. But, but those could be development and quality and so on. You know, so, or small systems. So, you are aware of this uh, utility called Putty? You have used this anyway, by any chance? <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Uh, so putty is one uh, utility which is freely available which is used to uh, securely connect to your unix systems or linux systems so you need to download this and use it then uh, telnet is another utility which is available on uh, windows platforms or on your uh, uh, desktops and laptops so uh, so that you need to for accessing unix systems uh, either of the utilities to be used but uh, uh, I would prefer using Putty because it has got a lot of options, etc. Then you can st uh, save the connection details here. For Telnet, uh, that's, that uh, facility is not there. Every time you have to remember the IP address, etc. So it is better that you download Putty and uh, use it. Okay. So, okay. And also, you know, the, the one facility which is there is, uh, you know, you can have the logs which whatever uh, you are logging onto the system then uh, you can have the logs uh, saved so that you can analyze those logs you know later on or uh, if you want to send it to someone that becomes easy uh, for example uh, now we'll be logging on to the uh, linux system again here uh, the example here is uh, dem adm is the uh, is the uh, yeah administrative login id so linux uh, once you log in uh, uh, we are coming to the listener here uh, so this is the way it looks you get a prompt here which says that you are logged into that or you can say you can uh, give the command who you know you must have learned in your uh, the thing who is uh, when you give the who command now uh, it will show you uh, who is the user who has logged in okay so that is available in this now let's see oracle listener see uh, this is your oracle say oracle database okay and uh, this is a process which connects the clients okay the web client or the sap gui client to the database okay so this if this listener it, is not running what happens is, is the client is not able to connect to the database okay now this client could be uh, your uh, when you're starting your sap script at that time also it checks whether this listener is running if this listener is not running then it will say this uh, we are not able to connect to the database okay once it is connected then the clients directly communicate with the database then they don't require the listener okay for, for initial uh, requirement is that your listener should be running because like, okay that kind of a thing so that you have to remember this oracle listener now for example he is uh, starting this system using the command start sap db okay and then he is getting this error okay there is a uh, uh, your listener is not available or your did is a database which uh, he has given name and that is not available so these are the commands which you can use listener status lsnrctl status or lsnrctl start start is for starting the listener so uh, while, while starting so you have to also you know keep in mind that you have to see the logs that are displayed they also give you a lot of help like for example uh, here uh, they have because sometimes you may not remember <clears throat> what what is the command etc but those things are already given in the error logs which are uh, generated so your next step would be to you know log in as a aura sid so the, now here the database id which he has uh, given is did so earlier we had logged in as a uh, 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 sap administrator id that is your administrator id is a sid KDM. This is for this is called a SAP admin, and uh, your Aura 
SID is a Oracle or a, uh, DB ID, DB admin. Because both of them have a different types of uh, permissions on the uh, on the server. So no, no, you don't have to remember. See, uh, these are standard across all systems. So uh, remember in the sense what you have to remember is what is the system ID. After that you prefix it uh, with ADM. For example, you are whatever your SID IDM. You can ask anyone. You know what is the SID if you ask them. Then you know that these two users. Someone says my SID is say uh, UYT, UYK. So you know that your SAP administrator is UYK ADM. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, your Oracle is if it is on Oracle database, it will be Ora U Ora or you can say Ora UYK like that. But if your uh, uh, database ID is also different, it is say KYK, then uh, they will tell you that okay, our database ID uh, is KYK. So you have to just remember like that. Okay. See with uh, with your daily kind of activity now. You don't have to remember this. You know that there should be two users. You should be able to log in with that. Okay. <clears throat> so well, you will log in as your uh, Oracle ID, and uh, then, then uh, what you will have to do is uh, uh, you will check the status LSNR CTL status. What is the listener status? Okay. So it will show you that okay, this there is no listener is running. All these errors so these are all the oracle errors which are displayed here okay so you need to check you know uh, uh, check in the sense you know this listener is not uh, there so you but as uh, you know as part of your academic this thing you should uh, uh, view these errors w what does this mean you know so you will be and uh, for SAV basis what happens is whenever you get time you should try to learn every day so when there is a problem that that time you don't have to go and read it you already know it so that kind of thing you have to keep and uh, build it so for example here uh, this listener status he has checked and it shows that the listener is not running so the next step is to start the listener so here lsnr ctl start so what this happens is here what happens is this listener has started so these are the messages which are displayed okay like this and then the final message is it is completely successful so once ah, linux see uh, this is in linux but uh, you will get a similar type of output in any unix system whether it is aix hi or any unix system whether it is your uh, see see ultimately unix Linux, these are all different flavors of Unix. Few commands uh, will be different in different operating system, <coughs> in different uh, uh, flavors. But most of the things are same, you know, like for example, you want to switch user. So you will be using a command su. So that means that is common in all uh, Unix uh, flavors. Okay. So here you will find that uh, the uh, listener is now running. Now, once it is running, then you can start the database. Okay, start DB. So you will find that the database has been started. Okay. See, whenever you are starting uh, any system, so you are supposed to start the database first, because if you start the application, the application will not start since it has to connect to the database. So logically, you have to keep in mind that uh, first you have to start the database and database related uh, services. For example, in Oracle, you need to start the listener. So uh, once the database is started, the next step is to start the SAP. After the database has been started, you start the SAP. So the command is start SAP R3. Okay, I have given the commands below. So you. And they are very easy as such. You have to just remember, you know, start SAP R3. R3 is uh, the, you know, the server instance where you want to start the server. If it is related to Java, then you will just say J2E. 
This is for studying all instances on this single host. You see, there will not be many instances on a single host. There will be mostly one instance on one host. But you should be aware that uh, you have to check before uh, starting whether you want to start a specific instance or uh, so on. So if you want to specifically start a particular instance, then what you have to do is start SAP R3 and minus I and the instance number. Let us say your instance number is 00 or 01 and so on. So that you have to remember. Okay. Now these are the, this is the sequence like I was talking about sequence. So sequence, always you have to start the database instance first. Okay. Then ASCS, CA, this, uh, these get started automatically when you start the SAP uh, R3. This particular part is taken care of in start SAP R3. The only this is independent because uh, database will be different. Okay. And the management uh, console or the in Unix, whatever you are uh, starting, this will be different. The, these two parts are different. Only the sequence is given. Same is for Java system, same for uh, dual, dual stack uh, systems. So that uh, you have to remember that, okay, database has to be started first, then rest you can start up. Okay, like that. Now again, uh, while stopping, stopping the system, it is in the reverse order. Reverse order in the sense, you will have to start, stop the application servers first, then all these, because in stop SAP R3, it will stop all these three first, and then you have to go and shut down the database. So here, when we are stopping the instance, we are saying stop SAP R3. So now it is uh, stopping the instance. So here you will uh, get a, a pop-up which says that now you are disconnected from the system. By chance if you are logged into the system, it will disconnect all the users like this. They will get a pop-up like this. That your system has been shut down like that. <coughs> okay, so this is stop SAP R3. This is in uh, detail. So then it is going to shut down everything, you know, ASCS, everything. Right? But not the database. No, no, it's not. You have to just give this command. Stop SAP R3. Stop SAP space R3. Only that much. This is only the display of what are the, I mean, what what, what all components it is stopping. Okay. <coughs> like that. See here, yeah, just a dialog. See on this, it is not st stopping the database. If you see now, it is not stopping. It is going to just stop the other services. Stopping the database, you'll have to do it from here. Again, you'll have to say stop space DB. Yeah. Then only it will stop the database like that. <coughs> now, like we saw, we had started the listener. So you want to stop the listener also. Because uh, suppose there is some hardware maintenance activity. Uh, you want to hand over the server for, uh, uh, for that purpose. Then uh, you will have to... Uh, 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 also stop the listener otherwise then it will not shut down properly you know you will have to hard boot kind of a thing okay so listener you have the command for stopping the listener is lsnrctl stop okay then it will stop the listener okay now the, this is the sequence this is exactly the opposite sequence like I was telling you of uh, how to uh, shut, uh, while, while shutting down you have to stop the applications first and then the database like that okay so you will just say stop sap r3 but uh, i have not uh, it's unconnected you can't see Can you just join again? Or uh, shall I stop this? Uh, I mean, share again. One minute, I'll share again. One minute, I'll share again. Now oh, again, I'm sharing. Now I'm sharing again. Huh, yeah. 
so so sequence to be followed like this so uh, like i was telling uh, or dialog instances first and database later that is a everywhere you will find the database is being shut down in the last okay so the, this is uh, this is the method which is followed for any sap system to start and stop and majority of the systems are on windows and linux okay so this is the standard system which is followed okay so what we'll do is um, uh, this was uh, um, the day before yesterday the review which we did now we'll go ahead with today's right yeah okay this is uh, the standard credentials okay uh, actually i wanted to show you today but uh, those people have locked the uh, user id you know so we are not able to access see once you log in using sap gui you will get the client id etc and then you will get one minute one Hello. 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 It's okay. It's okay right now. It's okay now. Yeah, some problem. I have bought a new headphone, but still some problem. Okay. Uh, see, once you log in, then you will get this is the standard screen which is there, and this caters for all the modules which are installed on this system. For you will have, for example. Uh, uh, I will go into detail. Actually, I wanted to show you when uh, by logging in, but uh, that is not there today. So, logistics, accounting, human resources, uh, information systems, tools, etc. Now, in this, uh, our area is in tools. Okay, all these are related to you know functional modules like accounting, HR, sales and distribution, and etc. For example, if I click on logistics now. They have got so many options. For example, logistics has got materials management, sales and distribution, logistics, production planning, quality management, project systems, and so on. And so, a lot of um, components which are uh, available or installed on this system are available in this. So, most of our users will be using these functionalities. Okay. So, under logistics, that is what is there. Under logistics, you will also find sales and distribution. I have split that, you know, under materials management, you will get all these purchasing, inventory management, excise, physical inventory, MRP, all these things are there. <coughs> then uh, you will have sales and distribution, so many options where they will do, uh, you know, everything related to sales, quotations, billing, and so on, uh, dispatch, etc. <clears throat> this is more in detail so if you drill down now they have got uh, even in inquiry you will have about another 20 options in order you will have another 50 options like that so it's uh, quite in the like, like in the first screen you will see Array, this is nothing here but there are a lot of options which are available within these uh, this meadow okay so for example, this is related to your production planning. So production planning, uh, different, you know, if you're aware of uh, production planning, uh, they have to see. Has 50 other internal things in it. Yeah, like Plans. for example, you want to define what are the bills of materials, what, capacity planning means uh, on a particular machine, how much output you can get. Uh, what do you plan to uh, manufacture? Sir, my query is this is given by the management, right? What should be present under these? No, see, these are no. Uh, everything here is standard. This is given by SAP only. But management will decide uh, which user ID should have access to MRP or master data or product cost. Should access what? Correct. That management will tell. Because see, as basis administrator, uh, let us say you are managing say 3000 users. 
they will not know who is the user what he is doing he will be located uh, across the nation so you will not know so management will tell you know that okay this particular guy who is working in production planning has to be given this authorization okay so that you don't have to worry about what to be given it will be as per because we as administrator your uh, your duty is to just allocate the authorization okay and that management will tell us but these are everything is available in sap that's what i'm trying to tell you okay so oh, this is uh, finance now this, for example if you have got a user who is got um, finance login then he should have access to uh, accounts receivable payable banks etc he should not have access to production planning so okay. th- as a administrator you have to ask this question if suppose someone is saying you create this user id with your accounts receivable payable and give me access to say uh, process order or uh, process planning then you have to ask why this is this guy is in working in finance why should i give him production planning access or why should i give him sales order access so you I have got permission and give him permission ha huh, see ya yeah. see one is um, management telling you you give this authorization but as basis administrator you have got all right to ask them why he is having access to others he is a finance user he should not have but if he is saying okay sales order only display you give him display access then okay or for example purchase order is there accounts uh, guy will be has to pay the make the payment for purchase okay but this guy will say i want access to purchase order i want to just view it then you can give it like that so that that will come into the security part of it okay <coughs> so Sir, the, tomorrow can you help me with all important t codes in a note or pdf which oh. we use most ha huh, that i can give you that i can give you because i lost every t code i forgot every t code see you know uh, i know but you don't have to uh, uh, okay i'll give you that I compile and give it to you. No problem. Okay, sir. At least I'll get my memory back. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's been two or three years after working. Okay, okay. I'll do that. I'll do that. I think you got you got to know that I got I have some knowledge in this. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good, na. No? See, if you have knowledge, then. Uh, then even i will come to know that i have, i don't have to teach you this you know because i see if i know that you don't if you don't know anything then i have to start from basics you know but if you know something then i can start from that like that actually day before yesterday's class you don't need to repeat me sir i know everything in there ah, yeah, yeah 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 no you can tell me no, okay no, because no, i uh, what has happened is uh, uh, i did not listen on that day that's the reason i got recall with that class no problem just getting recall with this everything yeah 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 then no, you will get it that is not a problem okay. <clears throat> so basically under tools what we saw under tools uh, everything is uh, related to uh, sap basis and security so okay. you will have to concentrate on this for example this is abap workbench uh, abapper will concentrate on this customizing there is a customizing team who will work on it what we need to work on it is basically <clears throat> the administration ale and uh, ccms etc okay so here what we'll do is <clears throat> no what i have the thought of is in administration in tools administration i have decided to go like this of take take up each of the options uh, and then uh, you will be familiar with that instead of following you know uh, uh, a different this thing it let us go through this menu so you are familiar with each of the transaction codes so on the on this side left side this is the transaction code which is there okay s license sm02 sm01 sm28 sm01 sm02 sm28 sm license correct correct those are so those are the transaction codes so uh, and uh, it has got its uh, corresponding description also okay so uh, okay i have taken the screenshots otherwise i would have shown you there itself so for example sm02 sm02 is for you know sending messages to 
the people who have logged in into the system for example you want to shut down the system and uh, let us say at today at 6 o'clock but at 5 30 you can send a message to people saying that okay now system is going to shut down at 6 o'clock please log off okay so like that this this is for sending messages sm02 so this is the way you get a message and so on and you can uh, delete it or you can keep the messages archived also there is one option of archiving in this wherein you can refer to the old messages if required okay <coughs> then the next transaction code is license s license so s license basically tells you what type of license has been installed on this system what is the instance number system number etc so these details are available here and uh, on uh, here uh, this is s license S license okay uh, this particular icon which you see here okay this is used for installation of license okay you can request the uh, license key from this uh, URL this URL you can see here okay service.sap.com slash license key now this is this is a SAP marketplace uh, each customer has access to this and they have been given a customer ID and a password okay so you need to log in there and then download your sap license key and then uh, install it okay so first you need to download it from here uh, keep that file on your desktop and then using this particular key this button you will, it will ask you for the license key this this i have indicated it here okay you click on this then you get a pop-up which shows uh, what is your license key so that license key you browse it and then just install it so this is the way the sap license is installed if you want to delete the license you can delete the license from here okay for example uh, you have <coughs> you have installed let us say a temporary license and you want to install a permanent license so you can delete the permanent license from here and install the new license okay so Sir, the, one more query yeah if we delete by mistake the temporary one and keep the permanent one what should we do for backup the uh, see permanent if permanent is there then you don't have to worry you know temporary is temporary see temporary is usually for uh, 30 days is if we delete permanent and keep temporary huh. by mistake <coughs> See, the, 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 let us say you have deleted both the licenses. Okay. Let, let us take an example, you have deleted both the licenses. But okay. what you can do is still at the operating system level, you can go ahead and install using the OS commands. Okay. okay. You can uh, do it from there also. You can go there and install the license at the OS level. There is a, some command, one command called SAP license minus uh, SAP license minus get will uh, give you the present license status. This will uh, install SAP license minus install. So it will ask you, you know, uh, when say you run this, right, it will ask you what is your system ID. Okay. Uh, what is your system number uh, what is you know whatever details it is taking automatically you know, so it will take it from here and then it uh, it will ask you for the uh, license key license key so here you will have to give the license key which is there in your um, text file because whatever you downloaded from this uh, URL it is nothing but a text file you open that text file and then you install uh, when you run this program at the os level it will you it will ask you all these details and then uh, you give the license key it will say successfully installed like that okay. so even if it uh, you by mistake if you uh, let us say you delete from here you can still install it from the os level okay or let us say if you are in uh, you are logged in from the system and uh, you have deleted it by mistake you can again go here and install it that is not a problem okay. or your development uh, or your uh, for example uh, 
your temporary license you can create it from this particular url download that and again upload it from here like that so nothing to worry that's not a problem but there are options available okay <coughs> But uh, don't do it on production system. Uh, production system. <laughs> uh, now let's go to uh, uh, SM01. Uh, we tried to log in, but we don't have access. SM01 is used for locking and unlocking of transaction codes. Transaction codes in the sense, see, for example, uh, S license. Okay. We saw that S license is a very critical T code that should not be accessed by uh, all the administrators. Okay. okay. So, uh, so we can block them, right? You have to. You can lock them, or you can uh, restrict them in the authorization. Let us say you are heading SAP basis system, and you have got uh, ten administrators under you. So, uh, and if you, if license is going to be managed by only you. Then only you should have authorization, others should not have it. So in that case, you can either keep it locked and uh, missing, and you have to lock SM01 also. Otherwise, what will happen? Anyone who has got access to SM01, he will unlock it, use it, and again lock it like that. Okay? Because see, administrators are you know they are all uh, they are geeks, you know, like they know how to get around. So so you should also be uh, so, can we lock SM01 itself? <coughs> yes. SM01 can be locked. But then, see, what happens is then uh, then you will not be able to maintain anything now. <laughs> My query is, I'll assign every, I will, I will, I will adjust everyone's position where they can enter, where they cannot enter. And I just want to do it forever. So I want to lock SM01. Can I do that? Yes. But but once it is locked, then how will you unlock it? Then you will have to do at the OS level, you know, you will have to run some SQL script and so on. So that is not recommended actually. Okay, sir. Okay. And basi basically a small number of users will be only basis users. No, there will not be a majority. So only basis, so even for basis, they have got a standard uh, basis profile which can be assigned to basis administrators. So, so that is uh, restricted there only. Then, uh, for example, it is giving this error. You are not authorized to use SM01. So in this particular user ID, we didn't have access to use SM01. Okay, now let's go to the next transaction code called SM28. SM28 is uh, used for checking the consistency, initial consistency check. This is usually done when you, you know, install your SAP system and you're logging on into the system for the very first time. Okay. So once you run that, you know that there are no errors. If there, if there are any errors reported, then you need to analyze that. Okay. Like that. So SM28 is one missing and there is another T code called SICK. SICK. SICK, yeah. See, you can always remember this, you know, SICK. As you, as you want to check whether it is SICK or not, this system. So you can just run SICK. SICK comes from this. SICK comes from SAP Initial Consistency Check. Okay. SICK, like that. Now the another important transaction code is SICF. Okay, these are different uh, services which are delivered by SAP. Okay, okay, and uh, some of them are active and uh, some of them you need to activate. This is nothing but the HTTP service hierarchy. That means you you got a ABAP system and you want to access this system using the URL. So in that case, uh, you will have to activate this service. Again, these services uh, it, uh, are required only when you are activating specific, uh, for example, some of your ABAPR has written a program uh, and he would like to access your ABAP system using a URL. So he will tell you that, okay, you activate this uh, 
servers, etc. So you will go into SICF, uh, the, the hierarchy type is service. Then there are so many services which are available, more than 500, 600 services. So depending on which service to activate, not all services are to be activated, otherwise your uh, system performance will go down. So you will activate only when there is a request, you need to see, you need to analyze. You should be, you should ask questions why, why this is to be activated and so on. And only then you activate it. Okay. You should calculate the space of the server. <coughs> oh yeah, you should analyze why, uh, if, 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 what kind of program is going to run and so on. Okay. Then comes uh, <coughs> RFC destinations. See, there are different ways in which, uh, basically, uh, RFC is remote function calls. So, what happens is, for example, you, you are connecting to your um, business warehouse system, or there are some additional bolt-on systems, or some portal or something. So, you need to create uh, remote function calls. Okay. So, remote function calls can be defined using this particular transaction code called SM59. Okay. So these, there are different types of RFCs which can be created. So you, you will come to this particular area where you could have ABAP connections, HTTP connections, these are internal connections, logical connections. So depending on your requirement, you will define all these RFCs. Okay. And then uh, you can test it from here because each RFC will have maybe having a user ID and password and so on details like your IP address, host name, etc. You know. So th those details uh, you will have to enter and check whether your RFC is working. That is uh, done uh, through SM59. Okay. And this is very important because uh, and again this transaction uh, code should be restricted only to uh, specific, only to the basis thing. Otherwise what will happen is you know there are users who will use these RFCs to log on to remote servers and can they can create a havoc. So, so you have to ensure that SM59 is with limited users only. Okay. <coughs> now there are uh, communication tables uh, like TXCOM and THOST. These can be maintained using SM54 and 55. Okay, suppose you are logging on to specific uh, remote resources and so on. So the, they, then you need to define those things here. Okay. Suppose you, but then that is again specific to specific nodes and so on, you know, where they will tell you that, okay, you define this particular uh, in the TS, T host table or T, TXCOM. Okay. So this is the way you install, uh, sorry, you maintain these tables here. Okay. You can also have a look at TXCOM and TOS using the transaction code called SC11. SC11 is a transaction code by which you can give the table name and then uh, see what it contains. Okay. Now, the next part in this is uh, client maintenance. I'll just show you anywhere here. Okay. So, we have seen SM02, S license, SM01, SM28, SICF, SM59, SM54, 55, and then comes to client in client maintenance. So this is uh, client maintenance. The transaction code is SCC4. Okay. Yeah. So if you go to SCC4 now, then you will find number of clients which are defined here. Now this is a test system that's why there are so many clients they have created. Okay. So but in in a very in a production system you will find two to three clients. One could be zero zero zero, another could be zero zero one and then uh, third one will be your actual production client. Okay. <coughs> so now here since this is a test system everything they have given. Okay. <clears throat> but you should know uh, what is there in each client. So let us say I have selected this particular client, 800. <clears throat> what it contains. So this is your client, and this is a client description. 
then uh, in which city the server is located logical system okay logical system is required whenever you are connecting in uh, for example your bw system business warehouse because uh, it, uh, this logical system uh, is this you have to define it when your system is your client is created okay and this is unique in the uh, for a particular sap system okay. then your standard currency client role what kind of role is this whether it is a training client whether it's a demo whether it is your quality system so that kind of thing you will have to define it here now here is defined is as customizing <coughs> whether it is your production client etc now <coughs> changes and transport for client specific objects this is very important suppose your uh, <coughs> this is your um, say development client then you, you it should be ticked here automatic recording of changes that means what happens is whatever changes are being made then it will get recorded into your transport request okay so on a development system it should be like this on production system it should be no changes allowed because if you, um, if someone is doing changes in the client or customizing he should not be able to do it in the production system so on the production system it should be no changes allowed okay so no changes allowed on a production system okay on development system Okay, should be like this. See, change, if you have clicked changes without automatic recording, then what will happen is no transport uh, request is created. Okay, so you here you can say transport request is created. Okay, without. no okay so that you have to remember <coughs> and last is no ch uh, changes without automatic recording and uh, no transports allowed okay so this way uh, these are client specific uh, uh, settings which you need to check depending on whether it's a development or a production uh, client then cross client object changes changes to repository client etc see sometimes when you are transporting some request uh, if these settings are uh, restrict your transport then uh, you need to change this and then uh, transport your nodes etc okay this is a protection level suppose by chance someone is doing a client copy and uh, if this is not restricted what will happen is your your client will get uh, refresh with the new uh, new client so you have to keep in mind the client copy and comparison tool these settings also you need to keep uh, cat is basically you know uh, these are computerized you know these are test tools testing tools so if you have got Practically, we'll get more knowledge for this, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Practically, in the sense, uh, we, uh, uh, we are getting more confused here. No, we are, actually we didn't have access today. Otherwise, uh, I would have shown you how. We can do this again, right? Today, uh, see, basically, the offices are closed today, on Saturday, Sunday. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I am doubtful because. If I get the access, then we can do it. Huh? Um, no, we had got it. See, for example, this is the ID which I was given. I'll just show you. See, it is saying user not in validity yet. So they gave it only for one or two days, you know. Then. Uh, Otherwise, I would have shown you here only. I am getting more 
confused. <laughs> if I do it by my hand, I can do it easily, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll get access for that one too, right, sir? Oh, you see, when we are doing it, you can do it, no? You can access here itself. First, my query is, can I download it to my computer and can I practice it? Actually, uh, uh, that we can ask Ravi, no? that's not a problem. Because it's a demo system, you can uh, you can log in and check. No? Okay, but that, you know, that is managed by Ravi. They are... Uh, I'll speak with Ravi, sir. Huh, no problem, no problem. These are the settings there. Sir, can we wind up this class because I'm more confused uh, to hear it, sir? No, this is the last part. This is the last part. Okay. Not much here. See, this is the last. This is the last. I'm finishing here. See, suppose uh, now these we saw these are the client specific uh, the thing. And suppose you want to create a new client. Let us say there are so many clients. You want to create one more client. The uh, customer says I create one more client. So you go into the change option. There's a change op option available here. This is the change option. Because here you will not see create entries. You click on this now, then uh, it will take you to new entries. So you create a new this new entry will create uh, give you all these options again. What you see saw in display now, all these you will have to enter it, and then a new uh, new client is created. Then you log on to the new client and uh, copy the source client, whatever you want from another client like that. So this is. Uh, Sir, if you want to remove this new client, no problem. You select and delete. No, that's not a problem. See this this icon, no red. You can see. Yes. So that is just select any client and delete it. Okay, sir. But uh, you have to be aware what which client you are deleting, because the deletion of client is also risky. No, if it's <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So this is what we do for we have done for today. And once we get access, then we'll uh, do thing. I'll speak with Ravi sir right now and I'll let him know that I need that access or something. I'll request him. No problem, no problem. He's sir, working on that. Right? One of my roommate is saying that this, why are you taking this SAP again? This is gonna uh, destroy in five years, six years. Uh, SAP, no one is gonna use SAP. You should have chosen the nice one. Is that correct? I'm a little confused. As you are having 40 years of experience, I just want to ask a suggestion from you. No. Um, uh, no, what is, uh, what, what is, what is your colleague saying? Not colleague, one of my roommates. Uh -huh, yeah, what is he saying? Which... He is saying that SAP is going to close. I mean, no one is going to use SAP in next five to six years. No, 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 no. SAP is most widely used. Then, uh, most widely used. Even in SAP, I have got friends in US. They are, uh, for example, uh, Essilor, you know, Essilor, these uh, lenses. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, one of my friends in Texas, he, he is working for Essilor. So, they are migrating to SAP now. They have got their own systems. And they have got, uh, it's a worldwide uh, this thing, and they are uh, now migrating to SAP. I have got another colleague who is in um, Houston, who is also my, a consultant. My yeah. cousin also works in SAP basis itself. That's yeah. the reason I took. <laughs> <SAP>. <laughs> no, 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 see. Or else I don't know what SAP is also. I know, I know. <laughs> see, this is SAP ECC version. Now the version which they are coming up is S4 HANA. Okay, because, uh, yeah, yeah, S4 HANA, see, basic things remain same. See, S4 HANA started long back, right? My cousin said he was working on it for the past three or four years or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Three, four years it has started. See, it is a new product now. See, majority of the users are on ECC. Okay. <clears throat> I'll just stop sharing now. See, most of them are uh, using ECC, <coughs> and uh, okay. and then they are all migrating to now uh, S4 HANA. In S4 HANA, also we should do the same thing, or should, is there something new in that, sir? Same comments and same everything, 
uh, functional level number of transaction codes has reduced uh, s4 ana s4 ana most of the sap related basis part is same like ecc not uh, not much change except that uh, s4 ana has got uh, fury uh, as a front end so for from security point of view you should know how to give authorizations using fury that is there that is new but uh, basically things remain same I have got 40 years of 30 years of experience. 30. See, I, see, I've got, I've got 30 years in IT and 20 years in SAP basis. So, not 40. So. So that you have, you, you got experience in mixed things, sir. So I thought of asking. No, no, no problem, no problem, no problem. Because an experienced person can get me now easily. Yeah, yeah. He will have more, uh, more uh, knowledge about this. See, this will make you, you know. You, it will uh, make you comfortable whenever you are working on this thing. So uh, wherever you are looking for a job, you should uh, inquire with them what kind of system they have, etc.